Okay, awesome. Great. Sarah, welcome. You have a package, I think, right here. Uh, you don't have a package for the share or something. I can oh, even, I can even mine. You can have this, you know, okay. Uh, I don't. Right. Thank so, you. So, so, Peter, before we begin, there's a kind of last minute changes. Uh, Mr. Myers withdrew his application. He didn't want to pay the DEPP or do the pay for it, I guess. Um, and uh, Nick hasn't gotten done the minutes yet, so he'll be working on that this week. So, we do have still have uh, Adam's application up. And of course, and of course, the uh, solar plant. So. Okay, great. All right. So, really, the really the first order of business is to go. And we had talked talked about talked about this before. Was to go through the language that we had for the solar. Does everybody have that in front of them? Yeah. And <clears throat> after our discussion uh, last week, it was only last week. Uh, we came away with a. a, a George Winky volunteered to, to formulate this language and put it together. So thank you for doing that. Yep. And it's in front of us. Um, so want, want to go through it right now? And then if you want to lead us through what, what you had, George, that would be great. Yeah, sure. Um, so um, hopefully everybody got a chance to look at it. it was, uh, Richard put it in the packet. Um, I, all I did was um, offer up two options. Um, we're, by the way, on page 10 uh, of, the, uh, of the proposed ordinance, uh, the clean copy, um, under minimal setbacks. And just a refresher, uh, this is the um, setback from uh, public and private rights away from, uh, for solar modules. And the issue that Jack uh, Sutton brought to our attention, which is one we've encountered before, um, is that a lot of camp roads and some other private roads that aren't subdivision roads and those kinds of things have never been uh, registered in the registry of deeds. They don't really know where their right of way is. Uh, they know they have one, but they don't know where it is on the face of the earth. Um, may have never even been surveyed. Um, the um, So how, how do we have a setback from that situation? And so uh, I, I won't read this, but uh, so option one is how we dealt with it in the, in the um, uh, shoreland zoning uh, ordinance um, when dealing with the uh, setback between the road and buildings, which uh, is based on uh, the edge of the road, the physical edge of the road, which you know can be measured from. The second option is um, I tried to capture what we talked about at the at the last meeting. Uh, relying on the center line of the uh, existing road. And the way I did offer did that was rather than say, we were talking about uh, 10 or 15 feet from the center line and then measuring from there. I just, I just increased it to 260 feet from the center line. So that assuming that the road uh, travel way is 20 feet wide. So those are two options. Um, the, um, I think either could work. Um, the one thing I realized in the course of doing this is that um, we don't, in the, this ordinance, we don't have uh, some of the definitions that would be needed wherever, and, and particularly this um, provision, uh, we don't have definitions for road, we don't have definitions for private road, we don't have definitions for public road. And all I did was take the definitions from uh, shoreland zoning and the minimum lot size ordinance, which are essentially the same, There's some minor individual word differences, but uh, for uh, that's what the definitions are at the bottom and onto the second page. Uh, that's where those came from. So. Those are incorporated in the document, the ordinances that you have before you on pages five and six. Thank you. Thanks. Um, when I looked at it, I mean, it was both saying 250. I, mean, I think in the email it said 250 as well, but either way, um, I like option one and then the additional definitions. Um, that way we're just keeping it clean and not going to 250 to 250. 
it doesn't cloud the issue. It's just a number and we go from the edge. Gotcha. You do, okay. Yeah. I, I really like I really like the idea of, of consistency for definitions too. So between ordinances, keeping them the same. So you borrowing language you already have and it is wise. So thank you. So there is there is another uh, mention of a private road right of way on page eleven. Small Roman numeral six. So you may need to apply the same, whatever you guys decide to apply the same option to that paragraph as well. Yeah, and to be handled, uh, whichever option you decide to decide on option one to modify the language in the same manner. Yeah. Yeah, I, I actually prefer option one of, of those two as well. I think it's nice and clean. I like the two. Drawing up another number like 260. Yeah, right. No, that just adds a little bit of confusion. Right. Where'd that come from? I was actually going to ask, not being at the last meeting, but that was a typo. <laughs> but as you can tell, it was intended uh, to be that number to account for that variation from the stairway. Um, or from the edge. Uh, Sarah, do you have any preference? I'm good. You like number one? You like number one? Yeah. Pete? I like 270. <laughs> I'm trying to give you guys away. There's one in every crowd, Pete. Thank you. Yeah, number right. option one. Do we, like, do we like one? And then are, are we all in agreement then that um, the, to include the definitions as presented on this, we, we just borrow from those and then include also in this one? Knowing that there would be some uh, a consequence, like Anthony mentioned, you wanted to clean up a little bit. Are we good with that? All right, so let's do that. Um, Anthony, are you able to do that for us? Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, is there anything else we need to do on this? I mean, I'd be, if you if the board feels necessary, we could take a have a motion on this and have it recognized that way. Um, I think we have general agreement, but. I want to make sure we're good. So if the board so feels I'd entertain a motion on this for for official recognition. Yeah, we should have a motion. Yeah. Do it. Oh. Uh, we, I make a motion regarding the options to address solar facility setback on private roads that we go on with option one. I was certainly going to discuss around the same problem. A solar you can I can you can just read you know, yep. it. Okay. Read that out. Copy. Yep. And then the definitions. Yeah. Oh, solar module may not be located less than 250 feet from existing public and private rights of way, or in the case of a private road where the location right away has not, has not been surveyed and sort of spend the kind of risk with the subdivision plan, pilot plot plan, or other similar legal documents. Solar module may not be located less than 250 feet from the near edge of the current physical location. On the private road. I was just going to say, like, do you want to, in your motion, do you want to include that you'd like to have these definitions that George presented as part of your motion too? Oh, no, I just, uh, I, I, want, I want to keep it brief. So, just okay. that the option one. Okay. Would the additional definition? Uh, would the additional definition? Okay. All right. So, we have a motion and seconded and seconded. Any more discussion? No? Thank you very much for helping put this together and put, putting pen to paper, as it were, and putting it down. Appreciate that. So all those in favor? So roll call vote. So Craig? Yes. Pete? Yeah. Yes. Sarah? Yes. George? Yes. Rich? Oh, that's right. Already. Understood. And I am in favor. Five in favor, none opposed. Thank you, Rich. Appreciate it. All right. So that's the end of it. So, uh... As I mentioned a little earlier, I'm gonna I'll send you guys and ladies all a uh, final copy of this. All the language that's been struck from the existing ordinance is struck through. All the additional language is underlined, like it would be for the voters. If you see any mistakes, I can I'll send this out this weekend, if not sooner. Then please let me know because uh, next week, if you next week, I'll send a clean copy to Mary to include in this one for tonight. Okay. For their consideration. 
just as a reminder, the process will be that assuming that the select board approves this, I don't know why they wouldn't because they've been kept in the loop the entire time. Everything that you've received that I've sent, they've received as well. Uh, then it goes to the uh, to the town attorney for his. So um, thank you very much, Anthony. <clears throat> Is the next select board meeting on the, on the 14th or something? Or? Let's see, they had one on the 5th. So they'll have one on the 19th. Thank you. Okay. So uh, that also in, should indicate that we should have a high level sort of recap kind of memo prepared for the 19th, correct? Yeah. So in advance, I'll do that. I'll come up with something that has, has some high level bullet points yeah. that's digestible. And, um, and you can just send that directly to, to Richard. I shall. All right. Thank you, everybody. I think I think uh, we're good. Um, and Anthony, have a great night. This has been my favorite meeting of the week. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> well, we appreciate what you do for us. Good luck, Yeah. Like that. yeah. <laughs> okay. So moving on to uh, to new business, then. Richard, do you want to lead us through this application? Sure. So I'm uh, simply removing the deck and replacing it in the same exact deck, but in much better shape. Uh, attached to his application is the DEP permit by rule, because the deck looks to be like uh, at least part, part or half of it anyway, looks to be in the water. Just like that. Yeah. Roughly at least half. Yeah. And, uh, so I think our bases are covered and essentially that is really it. Just have to teach how much to do. Thank you for doing this. Sorry, by the way. It's our it should be able to resolve the issue. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah. They did, yes. Yep. Excellent. Um <clears throat> so before the meeting gets started, I, I know I was wondering um was there much was there need for you to come before us? I didn't I wasn't really sure when I was looking at it. I may want to depend upon others who are more experts in specific definitions and where it's applicable. Um, it's really based on the case because uh, Richard and I had the same conversation. I know in Rome, I did read here, it was all of the water. It's probably 90% of the water. I mean, it's on shore a little bit. But what they just made us do is just get a uh, permit by rule. They just want to document the sizes and everything. And they just pushed us. Right. How you want us to look at it. And I appreciate you taking the time and going through the application. Um, I only mentioned the question that I had in mind. It wasn't really for you. It was just like, huh, I wonder if we could do this without having to do this. I didn't know. So, as, long as, it, yeah. as long as it's on the shore or somewhere. Then we have to probably, right? Because it's a structure that's yeah. on the shore. So, I bring that close to the shore, whereas it's not fully in the shore. You mm -hmm. gents might okay. want to take a look. That, that was the only thing I could think of about it. I mean, because uh, it seemed like it's nothing else is changing. It is a uh, an aged structure that needs in, is in need of replacement, right? The dimensions are the same. It's not moving in any, in any direction. Same location. I mean, we're just repairing it. It's been the past you know, 15 years, but it's at the point where it can't be repaired. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Take the real strict approach. Right. Right. Because we faced things like this before. Yeah. You know. Yeah, not not too many people would take that approach. <laughs> So Peter, yes, your your thinking is this comes before us rather than Richard because I assume we're in the limited limited residential zone and because it's an accessory structure on a non-conforming lot. That that last part that was what I was thinking. If, if I'm thinking correctly, yeah, I'm glad it's not all in the water. Part of it is on the land, you know, I, and that's the reason I thought I, to myself I was thinking accessory structure. And 
some of his own lands. Probably has to break yeah. them, folks, even though he did have this determined by rule. I think it's conforming to the law, though. Right? Like, like, so yeah, I think there's plenty of land that was able to learn to get a frontage. You should say on that. Yeah, you got 250 on your little map, dude. Yeah, that's the back. Oh, that's the back. It should be uh, so, a across the front. I think it's over. It's probably more than 250. Just look at yeah, this because that's that okay. angle. So, there's 31 feet of water from it. So, it is a conforming lot. Conforming lot and then non conforming structure. Is that what we're calling it? Non conforming structure. Yeah, it's conforming. Just touching the shore. Yeah. The rest of it's over the water. I just want to start from the right foot. Yeah. George, you were looking at the cable? Yeah, I was. Um, that was this, my question was more for my own edification <laughs> than anything else. Uh, um, So a uh, question for you, Rich. Um, again, this is, apologize that I'm taking your time no, to you're figure out what the ordinance says, but um, uh, the, um, uh, I'm on page 67 where you have the different uh, special ex exceptions and one is for water dependent structures. This isn't a water dependent structure. I don't know what is, um, but the ordinance doesn't define it. Um, but I'm not quite sure I understand what that says. <laughs> it, it seems to say that a water dependent structure doesn't need to be moved back to the greatest practical extent. The, uh... Well, the, the, the greatest practical extent would be, did you say you're on 67? 67, number five. five. On the bottom. Yeah. Um, yes. Okay, that, that whole section has to do with allowing a structure and resource protection district if there's no other place on the property to put the structure. Oh, that whole exception? Yeah. Well, and everything that's included under it. Yeah. So that's not that, relevant here. Not real. No. It's, okay. Uh, All it's, right. it's, we, we wanted to make sure that we weren't, uh, the town wasn't subject to takings, claims, or whatever if the person had okay. only land right. in the so, resource protection district. So that right. was the special exception for that. Okay. Because I, I vaguely recall that there was something in the ordinance about water dependent structures, and that was mm -hmm. the only thing I could find. Yeah. There, there, there is something also in the ordinance that it, uh, it says a boathouse is not a water dependent structure. Right. Uh, which some people don't know where would that come from. Right. But we were seeing uh, people converting boathouses, get a permit for a reconstruction of a boathouse, and it doesn't turn out to be a, a boathouse at all because it's well in game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So in this case, let me, if you don't mind me asking, so the, this is on Davenport Road on Great Pond, right? And is that land kind of flat? I mean, no, but it's not steep or anything, right? Okay. And so what, so just starting at the right point, so we have kind of regular kind of lot that is conforming, is a non-conforming structure. 
or it's not in resource protection. So where does this have, where does, where in the shoreland zoning ordinance are we to make sure that we're landing on the right thing? Because it's just strictly a little, little non-conforming accessory structure. I just want to make sure we're going down the right, right road. Yeah, that, that I guess was sort of the nub of my questions because yep. I couldn't figure it out unless, unless it's that, uh, you know, that be, because it is a water dependent structure, the answer to can it be moved to any practical extent? The answer is no. no. Yeah. I considered it a non conforming accessory structure. It's like all mm -hmm. just like decks, decks, a lot of decks. They're conforming, but they're still accessory structures. This one just happens to be half water. Yeah. That's the way I look at it. I mean, you may recall we had one on Long Pond <clears throat> that also um, needed to be reconstructed. And that was, but it wasn't part of a dock system or anything like that. Um, and that did get moved back a few feet. Couldn't be moved much, but it was, that was a true deck, not a deck dock. Deck So the, the thing two, that's the one dock fingers go to it. So What's that? The two dock fingers pump to this. So the two fingers are right out to the dock, they pump to this. It's yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of part of that just stayed in forever. Right. And you're referencing the one where the guy representing the owner was the code officer. We got wicked ticked at us because we made him move it back. Oh, yeah. And from Woolwich. Yeah. 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 yeah no, he was with it. And then what we couldn't move it back much further because of the trees or rock or something yeah, like that. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Camp wasn't too far from the water no. itself, but yeah. just yeah. very little. Room. It was an after the fact application yeah. issue. Yeah, I do remember that now. So <clears throat> for this particular thing, are we kind of early on in the in the ordinance, basically around page like 13, 14. As we get into non conforming structures, um, this is not stairs or ramps, it's not under relocation. Talking about basically replacement of a structure that's non conforming. And then you say if you consider that you get part of the dock system and being more dependent, it's not a non conforming structure. Question then becomes in my mind whether Richard can issue the permit because it's conforming structure on a conforming lot. Did we determine whether it was water dependent or not? I thought. Well, if it's not water dependent, then it's not a then it, it, it's a non-conforming structure. If it's a non-conforming structure, we have to look at moving it back to the greatest practical extent. So either, in my mind, it either got to be, can be looked at as a conforming structure because it's a part of the dock system, or it's a non-conforming yeah. structure because it's a deck with docking. So I've been saying that it's a a dock because 99.9% .9 of it's pulled up beyond the normal high water line. Mm -hmm. My mind, that's a dock. I think it's a dock as well. I mean, it's hardly touching the shore other than it connects to the shore and go onto it. Like their other house that goes right to the water has a walkway that has what I would consider a deck because it is 100%, if not 99% on shore. Then the dock goes to it. This one's actually out over the water. Right. So, like with the DEP, I talk to them and say, consider, you know, we're we're replacing a permanent dock. It's really what we're doing. You know, because the other two dogs come out, but it's a 
size of a jack. Um, mm -hmm. So that's kind of the way I've looked at it. I know mm -hmm. in Rome, I've done one, and well, in Caraton, that's the way I looked at it. He said, you know, take it, redo it, because it's considered a grandfather from Dawn that's there in the corner. On page 14 of the report, which is to remove damage or destroy the items that are caused by more than 50 percent. Going intact and uh, they can maintain it. <clears throat> so, the problem with the other one, uh, long fall, is they tore it apart to rebuild it. It had fallen apart before they tore it apart. Yeah, it's right. uh, mm -hmm. So, they were just replacing something that fallen apart. So, I feel like it's one of the and it should be able to be replaced. Well, it sure seems like it's a water dependent thing. The, you know, based on the pictures that we're seeing of how it's used, it sure seems like a dock to me. Um, that, was a boat right there. That, that was a good indication for me that. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and it sounds like like Adam has presented this to DEP and the vernacular they've used in the application process is also referencing a dock. Um, so it would be, so in other words, it would be kind of weird for us to interpret it one way and then DEP a different way, but the same thing. Um, so I'm just tossing it out there. Um, I, I'll show my hand. I'm, I'm in favor right now of thinking of this as a water dependent structure that is a dock. So, Rich, I have a question for you. If, if we as a board, Think of this as a water dependent structure that is a dock. Um, would we then turn, then it would be a conforming structure. Mm -hmm. There would be a conforming. Yeah. Then on a conforming lot, which then I think goes to the CEO. Is that correct? That would be my thinking. Like, is it's an accessory structure. And it talks about accessory structures on conforming lots versus non conforming. Forming line accessory structure and consider it to be water dependent, then there's no setback requirement that you need to look at moving it back to where it's practical and standard. Okay. You need votes? Uh, we will. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know. Yeah. You yeah. feeling a little, the ice a little thin over there? Or well, what? No, but I was. This, I had never encountered this particular type of application, and so I presented it to you guys because I really didn't know if it, between the DEP and myself we could take care of it. So. Yep. It's, it's worth it just for the discussion. Of yeah. It. Well, it's as you can it. tell, it's worth it. It's really worth it to me. Yeah. It's, yeah it's no, very I, interesting. I, you know, I Same. was on the board since 2015. This is the first time. Same. It's very Good worthy. Education. The other part I would want to remind anybody who's listening and you is that the first nail that happens, the first sound of hammers on the water, the town is going to get calls. About, <laughs> What's Gardner doing down there, right? And so let's, this is why we air it out and do it in front of everybody, right? It's not just like an arbitrary thing. We're trying to go through this thoughtfully, you know, and look at what applies. And, no, I, and I like the way you did it because I learned quite a bit just in the last 10 minutes. Yep, fantastic. I did too. <laughs> I think we all did. Yeah. It's, a, it's a very good process to go through. And I don't want to expend a lot of Adam's time. He's been very patient with us. So no. thank you very much. We appreciate it. Yes, Craig. I make a motion. Yes, please. I make a motion that we um, refer this permit to the CEO due to the fact that it's water dependent and the permit by rule labels it as a permanent dock on a conformity. Structure. We hit the key words. Thank you. So we have a motion on the floor to refer to the CEO. I'll second. And second it. Any more discussion on this? 
Thank you very much. Thank you. So roll call vote. So uh, all in favor. So Craig. Yes. Pete. Yes. Sarah. Yes. George. Yes. I too am in favor. Rich, thanks for your consultation. Uh, appreciate that. So we'll be able to deal directly with the CEO on this. Okay. So really a uh, num number of things. First, thanks for filling out the application. Um, I noticed there was a, uh, there was a, a DEP certified contractor number. Is that yours? Yes. Sir. I yeah. figured probably as much. So thank you for filling that out. And you can deal with Richard. You should be all, all squared away and good to go, I suspect. So. so I don't think we're going to be here too much longer tonight. If you want to wait tonight, get your coffee, then your golden ticket. Yeah. Or you want to do it uh, Tuesday, come pick it up. Okay. You want to do that Tuesday tonight? Let's do that. I'll have you ready for it. Thanks, Thanks, Adam. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, Adam. Really appreciate your sure. time. Okay. All right. That's that. Um, let us go on to CEO update. Do you, do you have permit updates for us? Yep. So right now I have six applications. One, I believe we intentionally stalled. That would be our 142 million camp road headache. Um, keep sending me bits and pieces of the application. So she's the one that put the steps in the water and she has mm -hmm. Half it will not do. She has a few flagstones all over her yard. So, mm -hmm. um, so they just keep getting on her. So, what I, my intention for next week is to go to her house and I want to get a good measurement from the water to the, to the house, I guess. Or that's a good question for you guys. Um, so, the closest part of her structure would be the stairs coming off, right? That, that would be what we'd measure to, correct? Because they're, they're new, is that correct? Or I would say, I mean, I don't think the stairs coming. Yeah, that's my question. Do I measure to the foundation or to the? Um, generally speaking, I've been measuring to the foundation. So, yeah, the foundation. Okay, I just want to clarify. Mm -hmm. So, what's the what's the alternative to I mean, the foundation? The stairs. Oh. The oh, stairs are closer right. to the wall. Yeah, right. it's just a set of stairs. Yeah, the stairs so are in a depth. Yeah, I thought maybe an issue was you measure to the foundation or to the edge of the roof. No, no, no. In that um, case, it'd be the edge of the roof. Right, whichever's closest. So, um, no, it's a deck and stairs. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to go up there and get an accurate measurement. And uh, then I need to look at, she's just got, she's got like an out building. She's got a big garage. I think that's past 100 foot. Mark. But I need to get calculations as to her impervious surface, and I need to measure her flagstones and stuff like that. So I think she's intentionally stalling because I keep emailing her and calling. She just sends me a little bit of here, and, and I'm like in my last one, I said I need four pictures of your house, all sides of the house. And that was two days ago. I've gotten nothing. So. Um, so other than that, um, one of the applicants is starting in September, one in the fall. Uh, and two of them are commercial from A. Hudson. And I think I'd like to put that one on next, next board. Um, and from a paper and ink standpoint, even if I double side this particular application, it's 98 pages, I think. Wow. Um, so I didn't know how, how we felt about that. And the other one's like 106. What's the fourth? Uh, the Watkins Family Farm turning that into a three apartment unit. And then the other one is for a dining facility, can't hold it. But as you probably know better than I do, Lady Hudson always has a lot of paper on their stuff. So I, I'll look through and see if there's anything I can take out. But there are some pages I can take out, such as headers. And this is this section maybe of that, but still it's 96 pages long. Richard, have they submitted, you know, the, Ordinance required eight copies. Eight copies? Yeah. No. I think it's one, one. One copy is 96 pages. Because the alternative is to have them do all the uh, photocopying okay. as, as the ordinance requires. I think that's the reason. And yeah. us coming to the town office to pick those up. Okay, great. I like that. Save me time and save the town money. I'm all about Yep. Um, so essentially, uh, that's it. Right now, a lot of seconds going in for some reason. So if you could just let us know when you have those. 
Yeah, I do. I'll give it on to you. Know, to my email Jeff. Because in the past, they've actually been quite good about having. Oh, and I'm sure you will apply. I'm sure. I'm sure you will. Yeah. I mean, kind of understand what's happening. Well, they've kind of undergone a change in ownership too. So, who? Maybe Hodson. Yeah. Now Hodson died. He oh, okay. had sold the business to one of his employees. I can't remember his last name. His first name is Ben. He's been, been here before. Yeah, he's yeah. been here multiple times. Yeah. He's got a small stature. Who's that? The owner, prior owner. Al. Was it? Al? No. 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 Size guy. Yep. Yeah. I remember the name, but I can't see the picture. Anyway, okay. It is. So you used, used to live in Waterville, moved to Belgrade. So, in the essence of time or lack thereof, I did throw on another application for this for tonight's agenda. So, a, I didn't have time today. And B, I thought it would be kind of late to notify everybody yep. in the application. So, um, Business as usual, very busy. Have you had many people coming in to ask you questions about this or that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, every day. Building questions, site evaluations. I had to tell this old couple the other day they can't do anything because they're so close to the water and their house is huge. Yeah. And I felt bad about that. There's just not much to do. Yeah. You know, it's like 25 foot house. It's, it's 20. Six feet from the water, <laughs> and it was just huge. Yeah, oh, that was unfortunate. But, yeah, but they're having a neighborly dispute, and they're so happy that we don't have a fence or this. Yeah, <laughs> that made their day. Thank goodness. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah a lot of people are coming in. I think your niece was in, right? I think recently, Kate. Yeah, get a permit. So there are quite a few. Uh, non shoreline in front of itself. Uh, we're up to his just made 69 for the year between okay. you, you folks and, uh, and I. Mm -hmm. so that's building. Huh. We're up to like 48. Um, really? So the town is busy. I guess that's good. Right. So I have a question for you. Um, so it's not so much about permits per se, but just sort of thinking back in time. Uh, previously, for a board secretary, we had uh, Sheila, right? Yeah. Then we had Alex for like a minute, right, or something. It wasn't Alex around for a bit. Oh. Julie. Julie. We had Julie. 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 After Julie, didn't we have Alex yeah. for a yeah. time? Yeah, I think she did one set of minutes. Right, and then then we haven't had anybody filling that role, right? Yeah, and uh, so Denny uh, required the help of Nick. Last weekend, the dad went to the hospital. He's back in the hospital again. So I understood why I didn't get around to last week. Yeah. This weekend, he's supposed to get around at least getting us some of that done. Yeah. Um, but we, we really do need a permit. Uh, I'm going to talk to Denny about that. We need somebody to permit. Is, is Denny in tomorrow? No. He's a two day guy. We, I just don't know which two days they yeah, are. Yeah. So when, so when there's a select board meeting, he works Tuesday, Wednesday. And when there's not, he works Wednesday, Thursday. So, so how do I reach him? I can get you his phone. I used to have his cell phone, but if I were to email the town, I think it's town manager. So okay, town I will do so. Okay, basically, uh, you know, show, show my hand. I think it's really important that we put it out in the ether that we need to fill that position. I don't expect Danny can solve it in the short period that he'd be around, but I want this. I want it to happen. Yeah. We need it to happen. Um, it's unfair to have it keep falling to you to pick up things. It's unfair for Nick to try to pick it up. It's it's we need to make it happen. And, uh, well, maybe coming from you, Peter, will be a little bit more important. He'll ignore it even more. No, just <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but I just want to put the plug in for it. That's all. I, we 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 as a board need it. The town needs it, and uh, I think it'll help both you and Nick not to have. Another hat to wear, you know, right. in these cities. So, and one other thing off subject, I guess, is I had a leaks committee meeting yesterday. They're the ones that are buying for me to get more hours. And so I think they're going to present something to the select board in August, okay. requesting that I get eight hours on Friday. I don't know how that's going to go over, but I know that uh, Ricky Cameron is on 
on board for sure. Okay. I don't know what the rest of the select board. And if you haven't heard, the select board did narrow it down to two candidates for town manager. Nobody heard that. They're both from me. I heard second rounds of interview are happening next week. Uh -huh. okay. And we should have a town manager soon. So uh, the facility. Uh, yeah, the facility. Uh, for the, up here for yeah. the, uh, maintenance. Yeah. I have no idea. I know that they're doing interviews in here tonight for, uh, I think it's just for the transfer station. Oh. Uh, Scott Dameron is filling in right now for maintenance up there right. on his days off. Um, yeah, but I don't believe they filled that position. Yeah. And uh, a gentleman named Mike, he was, you may even know him, I don't know his last name, he's a former state trooper. He's doing his sex and job, kind of take care of some. You know, I'm like you know. There could be kind of oh, a bit so. guy. Yeah. So he's doing the summer duty stuff right now. Allegedly, Chris buried somebody in the wrong spot. Is, that... is Mike going through? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably cool. was. Um, so that's as much as I know. Job. Yeah. 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 All right, great. Anything else? No, sir. Anybody else? Anything? No. I okay. A question. Yep. <laughs> I must have been out in left field and not paying attention. Uh, but why are we not dealing with the Myers one? Because it's still incomplete. No. He withdrew um, it. He withdrew it today. He oh. didn't want a. He didn't want to pay the DEP fee, and b. He did not want to do the rest of the paperwork. I guess so. Uh, he said he's going to plant some shrubs there, and he's going to. Find an alternate route down to the lake as that one's dangerous. It's too bad. I really want to, you know, see the mm. road area taken care of. His choice. Uh, well, he'd already paid a seventy-five dollar check that I was holding. So I asked him mm. what he wanted me to do with it. He said, "Well, you did a lot of good work. Why don't you keep it?" So I, said, I can't keep it. <laughs> yeah. and, and besides, very nice of you. But... Besides, he's a he's a rep. He's a very yeah. nice. He, and just a pastor. So besides that, it's made up to the town of Belgrade, and down in the bottom left, it says for a set of stairs at six Paul Acres Lane or whatever. It is. So, so I just shredded it for him. But I thought that was nice. He said, "I appreciate all your hard work." Yeah. Once in a while, I get a thank you, so it's kind of nice. <laughs> Once in a great while, right. cherish them when you get them. Yes, yes exactly. Now, do you have a tip jar on your desk? <laughs> yeah, it's still empty. It's been yeah. since January. Yeah. <laughs> Not even a nickel in there. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. If nothing else, I think we should adjourn. So I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Anybody? I place a motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? Yes, a second. Uh, any more discussion? All those in favor? Craig? Yes. Keith? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. For me too. Five in favor, none opposed. We're done. Okay. All right. That's six I think I can go.